I'll call the meeting to order. Please stand for the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Will the clerk please call roll? Councillor Bolin? Here. Councillor Elliott? Here. Councillor Fisher? Here. Councillor Grizzle? Here. Councillor Rieskamp? Here. And Councillor Scott? Here. Okay, approval of the City Council Minutes, April 24th, 2013 Work Session, April 24th, 2013 Regular Session, May 8th, Regular Session, May 23rd, Regular Session. Add one corre minor correction on the May 8th meeting, and it was under the liquor licenses. It was in response to Mayor Aziz's question. It's just the word question was left out. Is there any other corrections or additions? Did you get that okay? Yes, I did. Oh, okay. You. Okay, any other corrections or additions? Okay, do I have a motion to approve the minutes? So move. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> The minutes pass. Consent calendar. Consent calendar. On the consent calendar, we have the City of Lebanon Council agenda for tonight, the Bike and Pedestrian Committee meeting, the Budget and Committee, and that uh, City of Lebanon Council agenda is the amended Council agenda for tonight. Uh, the Bike and Pedestrian Committee, the Budget Committee of May 14th, Parks and Tree Board of March 19th and April 1st, and the Planning Commission from <coughs> April 17th. Is there any corrections or additions to those? I have a motion to approve the uh, consent calendar. I would so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the uh, consent calendar. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? <coughs> consent calendar passes. Okay, proclamation. Maya Gallegos, is she here? I did not see her come in. Oh, okay. Okay, if we can, we'll insert her in another spot then. Okay, that brings up Lebanon Trails. Rod? Mr. Mayor and Council, thank you for uh, allowing us to be here again, Build Lemon Trails, and um, really appreciate everything that the city's doing to start with. I'd, I should uh, maybe go off script a little bit and just tell you that uh, the last six, six, uh, well, six, not six months, but a few months have just been wonderful. Uh, the progress that, uh, as a community service organization, the progress we've been able to make with, with uh, partnering with the city is just incredible. And, um, it just feels like it's a new age, and we're, we're really fortunate to, to have uh, leaders in the city like we do. So, and I really mean that. It's, it's been wonderful. So, um, here today to tell you a little bit about uh, Bill Levin Trails, and then Dr. Nelson would like to tell you about our, um, our next big project. And, ah, let's see if this works. Nope. There we go. So just a, a brief history, in 2005, Build Lebanon Trails was created. Uh, we've been working uh, in front of and behind the scenes to, to really help the city. Our goal is to help the city fulfill their, their uh, strategic trails plan and complete that, which, as you know, is 50 miles of, uh, proposed 50 miles of multi, 
uh, multi-use, uh, fully ADA accessible trails, and about 20-some miles of soft surface trails. So I'm going to go through this pretty quickly because I really want to leave time for Thad. We have several things going on this year, and uh, thank, uh, and that's why we're so thankful to be working with the city because we got a wonderful partnership, and we'll show you some of the, how that partnership's worked out. At, this is at Cheetah Lake. This was the old walkway. Uh, that went across the spillway that now has been widened out to 10 feet and that's because of we uh, the city and the 11 trails has worked to, to get a grant through Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife and now we're going to be able to uh, uh, provide the funds so the city can pave 400 feet on both sides of this and include a, a, a paved part of the parking lot and put in an ADA um, van accessible um, site but that's not the only thing going on. This section of trail right here uh, obviously has a lot of wildlife and always does. Uh, we've, uh, we were waiting to see if we got, were awarded the Recreational Trails Grant uh, that we applied for last year, and uh, absolutely uh, we got it. So as you probably already know, we're going to be able to pave 2,400 feet of the North Shore Trail. That connects to the other 2,400 feet of the North Shore Trail that's already paved. So with the previous project that you saw that's funded by Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife, we're going to have uh, almost a mile's worth of paved trail there that's going to include uh, um, access to the ADA fishing platform that was built by the Association Northwest Steelheaders a few years ago. So it's really completing that project uh, as far as the trails go. Uh, but that's, that's not all we're up to. Uh, we're up to also enhancing other projects with the help of uh, jo John Digis Landscaping and Joanne Thad Nelson. We've been able to plant uh, over uh, 70 trees along the shores of the trails at Cheetah Lake. Um, and the big deal about that is each one of those trees on uh, any day that's over, say, 70 degrees need to be watered. And they need to be watered with 10 gallons each. Well, I know you know what, how much a gallon of water weighs, you know, over 8 pounds. So you can imagine 70 trees, 10 gallons of water, that's quite a commitment. So it wasn't just planting the trees, that actually was the easy and quick part. But keeping those trees alive is, is really, we have uh, great volunteers uh, to help us do that. So that's going to really enhance that uh, lake, or that, the trails along the lake. So just a few facts. Um, as you know, last year the, we were able to uh, get a grant that that, um, and when I say we, I mean the city and Build Love and Trails in partnership to put the 4,000 feet of trail, gravel trail at Cheetah Lake that connected into the Wiry Drive. So with the other projects I showed you, you know, and with the connection to the Wiry Drive, now we have a trail, a continuous trail, all the way from the south city limits over, uh, all the way to River Road. So uh, we're really getting the, the system together. And it's it's getting exciting. And in 2013, Bill Lebanon Trails has been able to fund two new gravel trails to be constructed on uh, the fingers of, of Cheetah Lake. There's a map that we provided for you. In fact, this was just came off the presses today. So, and it really details where those paved trails are going to be, where the gravel trails are going to be, and um, kind of like shows you the whole uh, picture of the of the trails at the park. So uh, this grant, won't, uh, this isn't a grant, this is funds that BLM build, build and Trails is able to provide, but this money was used as grant match against the paved trail at Cheetah Lake, um, the 2,400 feet for the Recreational Trails grant that we expect to have a notice to proceed uh, to the city uh, in August or September when we'll build, build all of those trails sometime after that. So, but that isn't it, that's not all. As you know, um, Jason Williams was responsible for getting the money back, that, uh, a grant that was awarded to the city but wasn't going to be used and we were able to pave 3,600 feet of the Mark Slough Trail. So there's another map uh, that you have that shows the Mark Slough Trail and uh, there's over, well it's two sections of 3,600 feet each so there's well over a mile loop now out there that's paved. Um, uh, and um, We'll leave some of that for Thad. Uh, the, the other things we're doing is the, it's part of the trails plan is to install trail markers every quarter mile. We've had two Eagle Scout projects out at Cheetah Lake. Uh, one was to install the quarter mile, or the markers every quarter mile. So all the markers on the, you'll see up there, is a, it says MS, that means Mark Slough, one quarter. 
And as many of you already know, each one of those that go in has a GPS coordinates that's given to the city, and then, then the city puts that on their on their uh, police and, and fire department map. So if somebody calls in and says, hey, there's a, a limb down or there's some other problem, and I'm really close to, uh, this says MS one quarter, then uh, the emergency response will know and the public works will know exactly where that, that uh, issue is. And I just wanted to share just, if, you, if anybody knows what that floaty thing is with all those wild animals on there, that's a one-tenth scale log raft that uh, was built as to kind of show some of the history at, at the pond or at the Cheetah Lake. And along that is anchored along the water trail. We have, uh, City 11 has two proposed water trails. Cheetah Lake is one of them. And that's an interpretive sign that actually tells the history of, uh, of the, um, I think it's the history of the lake or it's a, a natural interpretation. I can't remember which one's on that. But there's two of those along the water trail. And you actually have to get in a boat and go out there to see them. Um, so also, Eagle Scout Project installed two kiosks at the, at the trailheads of the North Shore. What's really nice about that is we have a place to display the maps. And now that we have a new map, we're going to go and update the map. So people that go out there know exactly where they're going. So what do we have in the hopper? Um, we have a few things that we, that we want to help you uh, accomplish. And um, so I'll leave that one for a later discussion for, with that. Uh, we have work days at, at, at least two a year, and we uh, were able to clear, one of the plans this year is to clear an exploratory trail on the south shore of Cheetah Lake. The other thing that's come up recently is uh, uh, Brad Bauer has, has come up with a proposal that he's given to the Parks Committee and uh, to work uh, with uh, Bill Levin Trails in the city to establish a cross-country uh, route. And it just happens to be that that exploratory trail is one of the ones that we're that we're uh, working on. So we've got another partner, which is great. So we eventually, uh, in the near future, actually, we want to connect uh, Cheetah Lake to the trail system at River Park. We want to connect River Park to the Mark Slough trail system. And we want to develop the trail that connects the medical campus to Academy Park, the site of the, of the um, Lebanon Library and uh, Senior Center. So um, there's other projects uh, that, that have happened because of the trails effort. Uh, the Public Works got with uh, the police department and cleared the trail that uh, it's a natural surface trail that's uh, on what we call the Warehouser property or the Land Industries property that's on the end of Milton. And so although that, that trail isn't uh, an official trail, it's nice and wide now. Uh, and people continue to use it, so. So uh, in 2012, we also made the connection to the hospital from Industrial Way. That's where the old uh, pond was, the fire pond for the, for the old mill site. And that's been paved. That was a, another grant. And with that, um, I'd like to uh, turn it over to Dr. Nelson. I don't know if it's allowed, but maybe Rod could pass these out so you can see them a little better. Rod, I have no idea what to, what button to push on this thing. Mouse button. Right here. Oh, I can do that. Okay. Well, um, the canal trail, or what we are currently calling the canal trail, um, is a project that we're all really excited about. Uh, I think some of you have heard about it. Uh, we've had some maps circulating for a while and so forth. Um, it's a trail that actually goes from the intersection uh, at the entrance to the um, uh, medical campus and uh, crosses hospital property, uh, connects to the uh, segment of trail. Well, let me go ahead and see if I can. I think I even have a pointer. Um, so right there is the waterfall at the uh, at the uh, medical school entrance. So the trail starts right here, goes across the hospital property, joins the uh, the trail that was paved last year next to what. Uh, used to be called the, the fire pond. It's now drained because it's no longer necessary. They have fire hydrants out in this industrial area. Um, the intent would be for the trail to cross uh, the canal uh, and then go follow on along the canal uh, uh, all the way out to the, the origin of Mark Slough, which is right across from uh, 
the um, Edgewater Apartments here, and then on out Mark Slough to connect to uh, what is the current uh, Mark Slough Trail Loop, which is now uh, essentially completely paved. That paving was completed this summer um, with the help of the city and a grant that had been sitting there and not utilized, apparently. Um, anyway, that's a wonderful trail out there. This new segment will be approximately seven-tenths of a mile long. Uh, every one of the three uh, private property owners along that trail, along the canal, is donating their property to this uh, project. Uh, they think it's important enough and enhances the value of their property that they want to do that. Uh, actually, one of them wants to make it a perpetual lease. Um, uh, BLT has really not started a fundraising project yet, although we're going to soon. We currently have $53,000 pledged already. Um, we have uh, Rick Franklin, who is uh, uh, ready to put the bridge in for us for free, up to 90 feet long. He's also uh, uh, expressed a willingness to put in the trail uh, from the bridge on William Street to the bridge on Industrial Way uh, and the railroad crossing if we provide him with a rock to do that. Uh, Al Sullivan has expressed a willingness to provide us with that rock at uh, very little, uh, uh, some sort of substantial reduction, I don't know, or maybe free. He hasn't said for sure yet, but he's, he's very supportive. Um, so things that people are really excited about this trail. Um, Joanne and my wife and I have for years um, traveled to different areas and, and done biking along uh, bike trails that are, you know, uh, on rivers down in Eugene and in Boise and all over. And, and it's just unique that we can now have that kind, have the potential to have that kind of trail in Lebanon. Um, the one hang up we have at this point is that, uh, that Albany owns this piece of property from, from the William Street Bridge to Hat Irvine Park. Um, and they are less than eager to have a trail. They um, have all sorts of reasons for that, but the bottom line is they see the, the whole canal system as being a liability, not an asset, which sounds remarkably similar to what we used to hear about Cheetah Lake. Um, at any rate, um, the city has met with them, and they're still resistant to that, and we're going to have to look at other other avenues to work, work our differences out. They use excuses like there's uh, there's going to be litter in the canal and actually there's less litter because we take care of the canal front there's going to be less access actually there's more uh, people might drown in the canal yeah well any place you got more than four inches of water somebody can drown people might jump off the bridge and they say they w they never allow bridges across the canal so it's just really a, a, a an attitude thing and and uh, we're going to have to figure out another mechanism of, of meeting with them and working this out. Our intent is to begin this summer, or excuse me, this fall, and put this segment of trail in without the bridge uh, to Williams, and then uh, start again from Haberline Park and around to connect to the trail. That leaves people having to go out and around. I'm sorry, I'm so shaky. I've been drinking coffee. Out and around uh, Edgewater Apartments, which has no, uh, no has no formal trail and no formal sidewalk even. Uh, but but hopefully that will be resolved before the trail gets built, or at least soon after the trail gets built. Uh, Albany would like nothing better than to have this trail uh, that their seg segment. Uh, restored to 10 foot tall blackberries, which was what was there before we cleared it out without really having their formal permission to do that. We hauled out all sorts of old tires and junk and blackberries and and it's a gorgeous piece of property. Uh, it's not wide enough for them to do anything with. Uh, it's just a matter of convincing them that that this this can be you know, th this is good for not only our community, but for their servicing the canal and so on. And I think we can do that. Um, at any rate, we are having a, a hike along this trail route uh, this Saturday at 10 a.m. Uh, we're trying to get as many people to come out and take a look at it as we can. This is actually a view from next to uh, uh, the Industrial Way Bridge next to Lynn Benton uh, Community College building. And this is where this is right across from 
the, the segment that was paved last summer um, near the fire pond and the, the, the intent is the bridge would go right across there and connect to the trail and on up the canal. Um, we would plant trees, we would have benches, it would, it would be an asset for this community for uh, really generations to come. Um, the, 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 there, there are lots of purposes to this. Uh, I, I, I tell people that I am very impressed as a physician with how many people you now see in Lebanon that are, that are walking, biking, hiking, taking their kids in strollers. There are a lot more people that are out there being physically active than I imagined I would see um, in Lebanon. Um, we're not where Portland is and we're not where Eugene is, but it is changing and I think this trail will be highly utilized. I think veterans from the veterans home will come clear over to this trail. Uh, it obviously connects through to the medical campus, which from there connects on through clear over clear over near economy lumber. So it's really a, a, a critical piece here. Uh, we do intend over the next few years uh, to have a connecting trail from Sheeta Lake all, all the way through uh, to River uh, Park and then from River Park on through to the Mark Slough Trail. That's going to take a while, but it's all on the horizon and doable. Any questions? This is a this is a part where we've cleared that had ten foot of blackberries on it, and that's what the trail looks like. It looks like there used to be a road there. Um, it's probably 500 feet long, the part that that Albany owns and that they would like to have go, go back to blackberries. Is your resistance from Albany, does that come from their staff or has that gone to their council? Um, I, Rod and I met with their staff, three people from their staff, and, and they toured the area there and initially said, no, 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 we can't do this, no bridges, no nothing, and by the time we walked them down this trail, you could see their, their mind change. Uh, but in, in, at the end, two weeks later, they came back and says, no, we're not ready to do it this time. Uh, besides, we have some differences with Lebanon on, on some canal issues. Uh, those canal issues were, were apparent, were apparently resolved on Monday in a meeting, but now they've still come back and said, uh, that now we're still not willing to put in a trail along the canal. The rest of it we can do. We don't need their permission, but, but, uh, and I still think they'll come around. Uh, when they wrote the original letter to me saying that, that we couldn't do it, uh, I wrote back to them and they didn't respond, so I, I wrote letters to our administration and to their administration saying what the situation was, and, and that's what has gotten things together where they've, they've met and talked but they're st in it, and I'm, I don't know if they were irritated at me going over their head, but you know, I mean, they said no, what can I do? And they won't answer my letters. And so we have to decide, well, what, what is the next step, you know? And um, I think it makes them look bad. I really don't want to go to the press. I'd rather resolve this because this is really a key, a key deal. And to say that we'd rather have, that they would rather have blackberries there than let us, you know, connect this trail really doesn't look very good, so hopefully we can work something out. And, and the city would maintain it. The, the intent is that all of this would become owned by the city. And so it's, being, it's currently being surveyed, uh, not the Albany part yet, but. Um, and I, let me just add, if, mm -hmm. I, if I may, Dr. Nelson, I have had conversations with administration in Albany, and we are going to have further discussions in July. Uh, about the, any of the issues associated with uh, the property that we're talking about. So my discussion with Wes Hare, the city manager, was um, uh, pretty open to considering uh, the benefits of, of such an arrangement. So we will follow up from a staff perspective before it, um, see what we can work out before it goes further. Yeah, I, I, you know, I've been telling everybody we're working with them, but this meeting Monday did not go terribly well. So. Uh, I do think it'll work out, and I think that's what I need to keep saying is that we're working with Albany because I do think it'll work out, and I, I think it honestly is in their benefit and, and uh, to their benefit and to ours. I mean, it, it makes the trail more, uh, the canal more accessible to maintenance, and it will keep it clean, and, 
and uh, we'll maintain it. And um, so I, I think uh, I think that will work out. Any other questions? I'm really impressed with what you guys have done, great and I, I'm really looking forward to the future of it. Keep, uh, it's fantastic work, and it's great for our city. And uh, anything that we can do or I can do personally, uh, I'd, I'd like to see you out there Saturday probably. So it'd be great. Keep up the good work. I was wondering if, and maybe this is a question too for John, if the council getting together, if they were, we were in agreement and putting together maybe a letter to City of Albany? I, you know, I think it may come to that, but uh, Wes, Wes wanted to have a conversation first just to reflect on what we think are some better agreements, as Dr. Nelson said, concerning the canal in a bigger sense and how uh, Lebanon relates to Albany. That uh, may actually be coming back in the form of a new agreement uh, for both the Albany City Council as well as you all to consider uh, sometime in the near future. And, and so we just want to keep that that spirit of we can work through this uh, together going before engaging okay. the, the council. It, it, it may all come together in July. Okay. Uh, John, if I may add too that uh, there's other properties that are on the uh, strategic trails plan that go through the city of Albany property, not necessarily on, on the canal, but places where the canal used to be. And one that is an important piece is north of River Park. And there's a, a long section that goes along the river that's part of our, our proposed trail okay. plan. OK, good. Thank you, Thank you gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks a lot. I guess I have to get up now. I, I would like to get the <laughs> If you want them, uh, I thought I'd get the laminated maps back, but I can make them quite economically. If you have any reason you would like the laminated maps, that's fine. You can have them. I can make more. Uh, so, so I got three laminated maps of that, and if any of you want a laminated map, um, I could give you one. But. Will these be available on your website as a PDF or anything? So. That's right. Get the lights back on too, please. They're on. Oh, are they? No. Thank you, Linda. I know. Seriously. Okay, at this time, we'll have public comments. The council welcomes all respectful comments regarding city's business. Citizens may address the council by approaching the microphone, signing in, stating their name and address for the record. Each citizen is provided up to five minutes to provide comments. Council may take an additional two minutes to respond. The city clerk will accept and distribute written comments at the speaker's request. Do we have anybody who would like to speak from the community, from the public? One more chance. Okay, seeing none, we'll move on. Regular session, item number one. Approval of the city manager interview process. We had a executive session today discussing the particular candidates uh, with their um, Prothman group, Greg Prothman, and uh, or John Nelson, our interim city manager, will go over some of the process ideas. Thank you, Mayor. And, and what I'd like to do is uh, I tried to capture the discussion that you all had as outcomes, um, and so I'll put those in the form of seven different areas, and then you can adjust those as, as you see appropriate. I did have a going out the door discussion with uh, Greg Prothman as well, so some of his upon reflection and listening to the comments are also included in this. So um, the action in the five different areas are um, the council wants to interview five candidates and those candidate names will be released to the community and the media either this Friday or next week once the executive search firm has had an opportunity to talk with the the candidates to confirm their interest so that's that's one point the council did want to have a tour and a reception for the candidates 
The tour on reflection, um, Mr. Prothman thought it would maybe be better to have all the candidates together with one or two, two tour guides, maybe a city councilor and or a staff member that could join all of the candidates and do a, a tour in one, one, um, one bus versus trying to accommodate individual tours for each of the, each of the candidates. And then the reception would be on July 11th in the evening. And what's being suggested is having that open to the public uh, and also ask the candidates to make some, some remarks for everyone, but a half an hour or so before it's open to the public to provide for an opportunity for you all to meet with the candidates and, and their spouses, those that choose to come. The interviews would be on July 12th. The, besides the city council, conducting interviews, there would be two other panels, and Mr. Prothman is suggesting that those panels be a mixture of community leaders slash citizens and department managers. So not just having one group of department managers and one group of uh, citizens slash community leaders, but intersperse them and have about eight members on each of the panels. Their purpose is to provide you feedback on the candidates as they interview the five candidates, focusing on not, uh, we think this is the best candidate as much as here are the strengths and weaknesses of each of the candidates that we, um, that we interviewed. The suggestion from Greg at the end after uh, talking about uh, the importance of having um, um, spouses uh, partners uh, come along with the candidates. He's suggesting that a stipend of $850 uh, per candidate would be appropriate. And then just the sharing of the information with the community at large that following the feedback from the different panels, then the council would reconvene and assume their responsibility in executive session to talk about the candidates and whether they would want to make a preliminary offer to one of the candidates that was interviewed. So those were the seven different points that I think I heard. Mm -hmm. And we just need, a, we need either to adjust, I think, what uh, I've just relayed to you, the way you would like to do it, or just a general motion that uh, staff should proceed to make those arrangements. Mr. Mayor, I would suggest that's a process uh, that makes a lot of sense. It covers the bases. There are some costs involved that I think are reasonable. And so I would move that we adopt the process as outlined by Mr. Nelson. I would second that. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve the process outlined by City Manager Nelson. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the motion passes. Number two on the list is Municipal Court Judge Contract Renewal and Trey Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council. Um, presented today, uh, I believe Judge Waite is in the, uh, in the audience today. I am presenting a uh, new two-year contract with uh, Judge Waite. We had a meeting between myself, the judge, uh, the mayor, and, and, and Mr. Nelson. Um, we talked about uh, a lot of the issues. That, the only things that we've really done is we've cleaned up the contract a little bit to show that it's clearly an independent contractor agreement. Um, and we've changed the, uh, the salary per month from a base of 3000 a month, which it has been since 2009. So there wasn't any increase from 2009 through this month, which is the end of the contract. And we've increased that a proposal to 3,400 per month for Jul July 2013 through June 2014, and $3,500 per month for July, 14, July 2014 through June 2015. Um, I know Judge Wade is here. He'll be happy to answer any questions generally about the court, um, and I'm more than happy to answer any questions specifically about the contract itself. Would you like to come up? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. I didn't come here to make a speech. A lot of people <laughs> all day probably were, didn't heard more from me than they wanted to hear, but <laughs> I certainly are would be glad to answer any questions and, and renew my offer to any and all of you to come down and see us sometime. I'm not sure very many of you have taken me up on that. I'm you mean voluntarily. <laughs> I mean voluntarily, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know Councillor Grizzle has been there a couple times, once as a prospective as juror. A <laughs> <laughs> I, 
Yes. I don't think she was there voluntarily as a prospective juror. No, I it? did go down as, right after we hired you. I wanted to see your style. And, you know, I'm a big Judge Judy fan, so I'm, I was hoping for, you know, some good rough justice. Now, it was I'm, awesome. I probably disappointed you there, but... Um, and my style may have changed slightly over time, as uh, hopefully for the better. But um, I think that I think our corp does a good job, and it's not it's not me. It's it's, our, it's my staff. It's the people. It's it's a collaborative effort. It's also a collaborative effort with, to to the extent that our interests uh, uh, coincide with the with the police department. It requires their cooperation with us and ours with them, and I think that works out very well. And I think we're doing a good job for the community. And I, and and if if people have questions, comments, concerns, they are welcome. You know, we had a chance to talk in, in more about the details of your job. What, what are some of the, probably like the, the hardest part of your job? What is, what is the most difficult part of your job? You know, it's, the hardest part, if you will, is to make sure you, you know, you're making the right decision and the fair decision, and you're giving people an opportunity to have their day in court. Jerry, would you, Judge, would you sure. pull that up? Thank sure. you. You know, for, for some of the people that come, most of the people that come before our court uh, are not the criminal matters, they're the, 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 uh, the violations, the, the dog issues, the uh, traffic matters predominantly. And most of the time, that's their only contact or that they probably have with the uh, with the city at all is, is through our court. They're not actively involved coming to the city council meetings or the like. And, my, and so it's very important, I think, that we have a, uh, a, a provide a, a, a fair and open po uh, process for them so they feel that, they, that they're, they're being heard. We've from fruitfully, we're seeing them at a time where it's not, they're not at their best and it's, it's, not a, it's not a fun situation for them, but we hope that they have, a, they have an opportunity to, to present their case, to be heard, and uh, whether they like the result or not, they leave hopefully with the understanding that they got a fair shake. And uh, I think that's very important, and we strive to do that in every single case. And um, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't want to describe this as being hard, but I think that's the, that we, it's, it's a goal we strive for all the time, and treat everybody with fairness no matter what the situation is. And I think we do that pretty well. Thank you. So is the caseload... Uh Changed drastically in your tenure? It's varied, and I honestly can't give you the numbers off the top of my head. I think that there's been a slight decrease in some of the traffic citations that have been issued for, for a period of time because we've had fewer officers on the, that were devoted to traffic. My understanding that's in the process of changing. I think we have a few more officers out there, and they're starting to work now, and I think their citations haven't hit the court yet, but we'll start. So we may have a little more activity in that regard. As the the criminal matter seems to, I'm going to, and this is strictly a guess, is probably pretty running pretty steady, uh, no significant, somewhat increased, but not significant. <coughs> the names don't even change much. I'm sorry to say, but <laughs> we do the best we can with uh, uh, with those situations. Thank you. Any other questions for the judge? Thank you, Judge Wait. Appreciate You're it. You're welcome. Okay, moving forward, um, we need uh, the contract. The uh, chair will entertain a motion for move, the move to approve. Second. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's been moved and seconded to approve the municipal court judge contract renewal. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? <clears throat> the motion passes. Welcome back. Okay, we will have a, now we'll move into a public hearing. Now is the time and place to conduct a public hearing concerning the revised city fee schedule at 6.38 p.m. I'll ask for a staff report from Linda Kayser. Thank you, Mayor. Um, on an annual basis, each uh, department reviews their city, their department's city fees and um, before you, in red, are any of the changes made from last year's fee schedule. We didn't make a lot of changes. Some of it was just language changes or um, if you have particular questions per department, I would ask you to make, you know, have 
have each department manager speak to those. The one question I had is, um, I don't remember what was, I, I don't think we had actually decided on anything specific, but we had discussed uh, media. Is there any difference in media copying fees? Because I noticed that that was one of the areas that was, had changed a little bit with some of the copying, photocopying fees. Oh, it went down by a quarter or something like that, I thought I saw. We decided that collectively, even though that doesn't really meet what it costs the city, we did, we did decide to do that. Um, <clears throat> just for a better a better feel for okay. what the community wants and needs. I think we tried to make it consistent across all the different departments too, Linda, is mm -hmm. my recollection. And we, we can, you know, as each year goes by, we're, we have more things available online and scanned, so copying isn't always an issue for us anymore. But um, we did state, at, and this is kind of a separate matter, Mayor, but um, we, try to, um, we try to provide those, the option to the press to come in and review the documents, and, and, and we work with them as much as possible. Okay. I've seen that. Linda, would job. you comment just briefly on the uh, utility late fee change? I would ask Dean Baugh to speak to that, please. So, so this, was the, this was included in that memo that we turned into the council last month. Right. This, is, this is part of our proposed um, change. So the question I had in not remembering the total discussion around that, the, the fee how do you perceive that dollar amount, which was $40 prior on most delinquent bills, how does that equate? Is that going to be less for the well, utility it, it, user? The, the, the current penalty is, is $10. And what we're looking at is an average bill is about $120. And if you have an average bill of $120, this fee would be less. If you have a large bill, like we have a couple of apartment buildings who continually pay really late, those are going to be a lot higher. Right. Okay. Thank you for. But but just so I get this right, Dean, that whole discussion is a work in progress. So this <coughs> this schedule may be amended yeah. after we do the survey work that the council review later today, and we may come back and and adjust this again. We got that right. We could come back and adjust it again. What, what we're doing here is this is being approved to go into effect when is July, it? 1st. July 1st. So we'll be through this process of the surveys. Well, that no, won't be till the August council meeting, mm -hmm. but so so we could put a note here saying you know to keep this this change would be effective after the August council meeting if we go with that we could put a note there for that. It did seem a little premature to, to to put that in here, but, but we we, we weren't sure how to do it because we wanted we didn't want to have to come back later and amend the whole thing again. So we went with it, but I I do think we should put a note here saying. This this be able to only change upon council approval at the August council meeting once we go through this whole process. Pending that, effective date of September 1st. September say. 1st or something, right. Or we can elect to have the effective date September 1st as well of the entire um, fee, fee schedule. schedule. All the fee structure? Mm -hmm. It's probably cleaner as well. Yeah. Would that throw everything off? Because normally we go from July to June. I don't know if you want to stop the whole thing for this one. We would just, we would just maintain the fee schedule currently That's it. in place. It, I don't see that it creates a lot of problems. It, it should. There's, there's not anything on here that would really affect anybody by waiting one more month. So it's it's so, up to council yeah. when they'd like it to become effective. So it's as far as administratively, it's really not that mm -hmm. big a difference. Then, um, okay. I would move that we approve. We have, yeah, we've still got to do the public hearing part where people oh. can comment. So you're close. The public? And so I ahead. didn't receive any written comments from the public. Okay, thank so you. We have that option Sorry. in the public notice. At this time, is there any member of the public that would like to address the council on the proposed rate plan uh, fee schedule 
for uh, effective July 1st at this point, possibly, well, we haven't determined that yet, so the due fee schedule. Anybody like to discuss that? Okay, seeing none, I declare the public hearing closed at 6.44 p.m. And at this time, I guess we, can we have more discussion on that? Yeah. Okay, I, I would say we'd have more discussion discussion of the council on what we want to do as far as the date and because we do have that one portion that's not settled not settled at this point so we don't know what to do with that well if we if we um, approve it with an effective date of September 1st that gives us from here until then to 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 finalize that piece of it and amend it before it becomes effective it wouldn't be that hard for us to amend that one yeah. feet <coughs> So effective September 1st? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Now can I move? At this at this time the city attorney will read the title of the resolution. Oh that's right. <laughs> yeah, please read the entire title. <laughs> resolution. Resolution number 2013-18, a resolution amending fees and charges for city services. Those are my titles. Uh, thank you. I like yours better. That's Move for better. approval of resolution number 2013-18. Second. It's been moved and seconded for the fee schedule. Uh, resolution has lost it. 2013-18. 2013-18. <clears throat> All those in favor? Excuse me, Aye. Mr. Mayor. Resolution. Did I s Does the, the resolution did not include the date change that we discussed, did it? That's correct. It did not. So we yeah, need to. Resolution oh, as, amended. as amended. As amended. Would be the motion if, the, oh, if that's a friendly amendment, then. Okay. And was that as the, amended? As amended, okay. And seconded as amended? Yes. Okay. All the, let's go ahead and do that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, the resolution passes as amended. Thank you. Okay, now is the time and place to conduct a public hearing concerning the state revenue sharing. I will ask Dean Baugh for a staff report. I'm just gonna move down. <laughs> you may as well settle in for a while. Okay. Okay. The state revenue sharing, this is a, there's two things here. One is a resolution and one is an ordinance. So I'll speak to them both at the same time since they're both required by the state of Oregon. They ask us, we have to approve these resolution and ordinance, resol ordinance by June 30th and, and get them a copy by early July. So we have, if we do not do that, we lose out. They'll say no revenue sharing. In this next, bud in this next budget year, we're projecting it will receive about $150,000 in revenue sharing. So that's the only reason these are in there is because the state of Oregon requires them. And we're just, ju we're just telling them that yes, we do do police service, we do storm drains, we do sewer, water, streets. Y you have to do, I think it's four, four of those seven items before you qualify for um, revenue sharing. And I believe we do six out of the seven. So, so that, that's the end of the staff report. If you have any questions. Questions? Okay, see none. I will ask if there's anyone in the public who would like to address the council. On we'll start first with the um, resolution 2013-19. Okay, see none. I will close the public hearing at 6:48 p.m. And I'll entertain a motion uh, for resolution number 2013-19. Please. Resolution number 2013-19, a resolution certifying the city of Lebanon provides municipal services for eligibility and receiving state shared revenue payments. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 2013-19. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? The resolution passes. I will 
now open up the public hearing at 6.49 p.m. for the ordinance number 2013-2, ordinance number 2843. Is there any public comments? Okay, seeing none, I'll close the public hearing at 6.49 p.m. And I'll have the city attorney read the title of the resolution. Ordinance bill number 2013-2, ordinance number 2843, an ordinance declaring the city of Lebanon, Lebanon's election to receive state revenues. I'll entertain a motion to approve the ordinance. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve ordinance number 2013-2, ordinance number 2843. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? The ordinance passes. Item number five, not gonna be that fast. Adoption of fiscal year 1314, approved budget, making appropriations and levying taxes, presented by Dean Baugh. Uh, now is the time to conduct a public hearing at 6.50 p.m. And I'll ask for a staff report from Dean. The, the budget as presented before you now is the budget that was approved by the budget committee. We're required to bring that exact same budget back to you. So everything is, is as presented. It includes the change of the $50,000 that the budget committee recommended, moved over to um, reserves for future park shelter um, rebuilding. So that's all, that's all included in this budget that's before you right now. <clears throat> the staff is all asking for a couple of amendments that have come up since the the budget committee. The state allows us to make a 5,000 or a 10% change, whichever is greater. Each of these changes is below that state required um, restrictions. <clears throat> the first one is in the enterprise funds. This is based on that at the same last meeting, you reduced the water, projected water rate increase to zero from 10%. What this is doing is taking that $390,000 back out of the budget and taking the budget amount down to a zero increase. So that's what the first one is. <clears throat> the reason it's $780,000 is because part of that is an interfund transfer, which kind of leads you to believe that it's a double, double billing thing. Because it's, it's an expense in one fund, it's out of the next fund, it's an expense in the next fund. So it's, it's double, but it's $390,000, which is being removed. <clears throat> the next item is there's a memo in the packet from the police department. Um, they made the decision after the budget committee to start a youth court program. So what we're doing here is we're allocating $5,000 of donations and then $5,000 of expenses towards that program. There is no city money involved in this. That they will not spend any money unless it's earned through the youth program or received in donations from somebody for that program. So there are no city funds <clears throat> expended, but we still have to have it in our budget before they can write anything out or, or spend the money they receive. So that's why we're putting $5,000 in here. <clears throat> There's one other item that came in. Yep, where'd it go? It's from the Lebanon um, Foundation, and I thought I had it all sitting here. It's the letter from the um, <clears throat> Lebanon Community Foundation that they came with a letter this week asking for a $25,000 donation to the foundation property out there. I don't know if you've all had time to, to read their letter, so I won't go through it all of it. I don't know if any council member here would like to speak towards this. Can, is it appropriate? For uh, the, yeah, I, I think at this point we would want to see if there's someone from the audience that would want to, speak to, to speak to this when the mayor opens it up for a public hearing. Hearing. So, so that, that request is in here. What we have to do is, if the council chooses to do the $25,000 donation, it, it would be, again, a reduction to the, the contingency of the right now. So right now we're down, uh, it's about 9.3. This would take it down to about 9% contingency. So, so, so that's where that would come from, unless council chooses to say they want to cut something else. That's council's decision. So th those are the items that have been asked to changes we were requesting. So if there's no comments, that would be staff's presentation. Questions or discussion on staff from uh, council? Are we on the budget? 
Including this Cheetah Lake? Yes. Uh, well, I, I would see if what, I would maybe discuss uh, okay. that after we'll do, somebody we'll do presented. First. Okay. I'm, and I errantly opened the public hearing earlier, so I will ixnay that and open the public hearing now at 6.54 p.m. Is there any members of the audience that would like to come up and speak on behalf of the, on, on uh, actually about any of the budget issues, passing the budget, or the Cheetah Lake Foundation? Okay. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing at 6.55. Now we can have counselor comments, discussion. This uh, letter was presented to me um, a couple weeks ago, I believe it was, and uh, I am in favor of seeing Cheetah Lake um, receive this money. I, I know it will stretch our uh, reserves down a bit more, um, but I think it's something that's positive for our community. I think they've done a lot for the community, and uh, it's something I'd like to see added. It just it did not get in uh, in time for the budget committees, unfortunately. I um. When I first saw it, because when we when we switched, we had the Lebanon Community Foundation coming to us for requests for um, grants, and we had the Strawberry Festival Committee coming to us for requests for grants. When I was first on council, we had several really great community <laughs> groups coming, and we were making these just kind of random decisions with no good vision on how we would spend our tourism dollars. And so we, and that's where we generally have taken this from. And um, so when we handed that to a, a tourism committee and said, look, we'll, we'll give you that money, you guys decide who gets the grants. And, and I think I remember at the time them specifically saying, look, we really want to be sure that you support the Lebanon Community Foundation. Um, and so, and so I, I felt like we have a mechanism to do that. And um, because I am a big Lebanon Community Foundation fan, and I love what they do, and so what I'm going to say is going to make it seem like I'm not. I love what these guys do, and I love Cheetah Lake. I I love River Park, but I was against in our I was against taking fifteen thousand fifty thousand dollars out of our contingency fund. Um, I I was afraid that set a bad precedence for it's easy to start chipping away now to say, well, this is a good cause and this is a good cause. And, and you know, well, we've got all this money. Well, I see the contingency fund as, um, you know, a, a tornado hits. We've got, we, we've got genuine crisis emergency. Uh, we have a blizzard and we go for prolonged weeks and, you know, we need hundreds of thousands of dollars for overtime and, and sanding streets or whatever. I don't even know. The, you know, catastrophic. I think it's responsible for us to have that 10% and build it back up. I think, it, I think this path starts a bad precedence and I think that they should go to the, um, the what is it, the the committee that, that, that we grant the money to that gives the money back out to the community. Okay. We give the money to the Chamber of Commerce. The Cost Chamber has a committee. It's not to the Chamber, it's, it's to the a... Tourism tourism yeah, the yeah there's an economic development, yeah, no, right. a tourism committee. Right. Yeah, is that what it is? Yes, it is. The Chamber of Stewart said that we have a, a community tourism committee. Got to come up, please. Yes. When the, ch when the city council determined that they wanted the chamber to be the stewards of the money, uh, Councilman Miller, I was in the audience, pointed to us and he said, I want to make sure you guys continue to support Cheetah Lake in the way we have. So it was a really significant thing. So this uh, tourism group has been very steadfast about continually doing what the council said. We have a, a, a committee of community people on this tourism committee. They make recommendations. We have a criteria for people that bring grants to us. Uh, they vote yes or no, and they determine how much they're, that the folks, they usually ask for a certain amount, and if we, we check our budget, see if we've got it, then ultimately the chamber board of 18 people uh, would vote on it. So you have the, the, the committee of the public, and then the board says yes or no, and honestly, they normally follow the committee, because why have a committee making recommendations if you're not going to follow their direction? 
Um, in anticipation of, of this, I saw this on the agenda when Jamie said it, so I, I pulled the records to uh, determine um, how much the uh, tourism has given to Cheetah Lake in the past. Since 2002, it's been $28,000. So we have followed Ron Miller's direction and tried to always, when we had the money, to make sure that they got their their money. Sometimes we have to make it in quarterly payments so that we know we have enough for other grant requests to come in, but we have been very steadfast about that. And I must say, Bill Levin and Trails, one of the uh, the grants that he mentioned, the tourism matched that. That's why they were able to get it. So we're really cognizant of, of trying to meet the growing needs of Lebanon and what they need. So um, they, we have been trying to follow that direction. So I can submit, this is the records from 2002 for all of the payments towards Cheetah Lake. I love what they do. I, I do. And given unlimited funds and the, and the fact that we that we can't maintain our own facilities right now, and so we just moved fifty thousand dollars from a contingency emergency fund to for a parks project, which I also love that project. It's just prioritizing, and so it it all just kind of it feels wrong. Well, one more comment, and I have to tell you, this is the, the feeling uh, of the committee, is that the economic development direction Lebanon's going in, Cheetah Lake is the one shining thing that will bring uh, non-traditional income and people visiting throughout, not just Oregon, but to this location, because it's on the highway, it's got the water, it's going to have the amphitheater, so it's always been a really good investment for us, Lebanon, to invest in that, because it will pay off and it has as they've increased their their um, different venues and they bring different people in and then they spend money at the at the stores and they do it it's it's a good thing to invest in and that's why we've always tried to do that at that level thank you Shelley you bet mr. mayor I would like to second I think what Rebecca said about this I truly am very much in favor of the concept of, of uh, backing up this Lebanon Community Foundation activity I have some reservations about using contingency funds as well, and this is probably not the, the particular moment in our conversation to, to discuss everything I want to suggest, but I'd like to basically say that I think we need to take a good hard look at how we do contingencies down the road. You know, we, we tend to budget a contingency amount annually in our annual budget, and I'm not too sure it wouldn't make sense to look long term and, and maybe build a, a long term true contingency fund that then we base our appropriations on or two based on our history and what our need is um, but that's a longer conversation than we than at this moment but I, I think with regard to your statement you just made I believe we have contingency fund on the August agenda it's either August or September's agenda we, we want to bring up and start discussing that the, the mayor was asking about that yeah and, <clears throat> but the point oh. simply is that you know, before we have that conversation, I'm not sure I'm ready to quite say, let's take money out of the contingency fund and, and mm -hmm. you know, conceptually about spending money is not the issue for me at the moment. I, I think the project is wonderful. We ought to figure out a way to do it. I'm just not sure the contingency fund method is the right method at the moment. Right. I, I, I agree. Both, I think I would have rather had a discussion about reduction of, of some other service, for example. Uh, 20 years ago, I think when I first got on the budget committee, I think our contingency fund was something like $60,000. I thought it was absolutely horrible that a city like this um, didn't have more funds. So I fought long and hard to increase that. And we finally, just a year or so ago, got to our 10%. I'm not sure that's a magic number, uh, but I know that if there was a, uh, we're not the federal government that can just print money. Right. And, if we had, <clears throat> if we had a uh, earthquake, tornado, et cetera, that's the funds that would be there for the police department, the public works department, et cetera. Uh, and if it was not there, we can't spend money we don't have. And I just, I have a problem with, and I think another reason why we're in better shape than a lot of cities around right now is because we don't spend every dime we have, we put some away, and for something like a contingency fund, uh, it's easy to, there have been a million things that were worth every penny of our contingency fund every year. Mm -hmm. But 
we have to draw a line in the sand. If we, the closer to the, the income that we have that we spend, the less uh, maneuvering room we have in a downturn, et cetera. So I would urge us not to look at that fund. I would encourage the foundation to come back to us <coughs> earlier so we have time to think about how we would want to do that or even have a discussion today about another way to satisfy that amount of money. But we, we've already, we're, I'm already seeing it go backwards and that bothers me. Mr. Mayor, uh, <coughs> is it appropriate that I come in at all? Or? Please, go ahead. Sure. You know, the, uh, the foundation uh, has raised funds and developed the public works component of developing the park in excess of a million dollars that we will turn over to the city at some time in the future. We just finished a $200,000 power backbone for the park to enhance the use of the park and to maintain the uh, ball field complex that will be developed next year in the amphitheater 2015. This power was essential and unfortunately um, due to codes and equipment deeds, <coughs> the cost of that came in above our budget. And that's the reason we're asking for this support. Um, the city's been very good about the support of Cheetah Lake Park. The, the board, the foundation appreciates that. Should you choose not to fund this, the development of the park will probably end this month. Uh, that's just where it's at. Um, we need the well finished uh, for the irrigation and for the development of the restrooms in the future. Uh, again, that's money that will be going towards a city park and I think it's appropriate and I, and I don't totally agree that it has to come out of contingency. I think there are um, PERS funds that the state has been gracious to not have us pay this year that would cover the cost of that as well as some other areas in the budget but we desperately need the support of some uh, capital improvement money to continue uh, the development of the park. Uh, and I could go on and on and on in terms of the needs, but uh, that's uh, uh, volunteer efforts that's been going on for 15 years, and um, we seldom have asked for uh, I don't know that we've asked for any city dollars f from the initial grants in the development of Wyrick Road and the sewer that we helped put down there and paid for the railroad crossing in conjunction with the partnership of uh, the county, the city, and, and the foundation. Uh, we've raised and spent uh, a little over three and a half million dollars to do that. That's a volunteer group of a small uh, board that has made, in my opinion, um, very positive uh, changes in the park to bring events to the community that spend money here, they shop here, they um, the business people of the community appreciate what's going on at that park, it benefits them as well. Um, some 40 some thousand people were in that park last year it's going to exceed that again this year uh, I just think it's you're not having any kind of vision at all if you decline this and that's it thank you any other comments Dean um, it's hard for me to imagine that we can't find $25,000 somewhere in a 35 something million dollar budget to do a project of this nature. Is there, in your mind, without necessarily having to be specific this moment, but 
in your mind, is there another place or places that we could look to find this amount of money outside of contingency funds? Let me, let me answer that. <laughs> um, if you want to get there, the easiest thing for you to do is uh, to approve it, knowing what, uh, if I could just go into a little bit more detail, um, Counselor, the, what he was referring to was changes in PERS that have occurred in Salem that will make our payment to PERS less than what we had budgeted. Those changes came through the legislative process after we had put the budget together. I don't know if, Dean, you have a number associated with, with those changes, but I would no, suggest. They're supposed to give us our new rate sometime by the end of June. It will, be, no it will be greater than $25,000, and um, it will build what we refer to today as contingency is, is oftentimes broken out into unappropriated fund balance that you can't touch and then a, a contingency fund that you get into when there's an emergency. So we do know, know that is going to come in better than anticipated because of the PERS legislation that passed, just FYI. Can we consider this separately and possibly give staff the month, find out what's happening with PERS and how we might be able to fund this cause, and, and talk about that at next month's meeting when there's some more finalization? I mean. How much of the essence is time to the foundation? How, how urgent is this? In other words, is a month of critical importance? No. Okay. 60 days would be, but 30 days is not. Do we need an appropriation authority for, for, for this dean if, if we do wait until the July meeting to bring it back? Unless we came back with a budget amendment at the July meeting to amend the budget. Right, so I, I would suggest it would be easiest for everybody if you made a uh, motion to um, um, amend the budget to include $25,000 for this request subject to further council action. And that way it, the placeholder would be there and we wouldn't have to go back and revise the budget should you decide to do that once you know Then we could have that numbers. discussion and say, look, idea. we no, could yeah. No money come would up. be released until you have a subsequent discussion if you amend it uh, uh, with that uh, sort of a motion. That makes a lot of sense to me. Me too. I'd like to see if we can find a way to make sure this gets funded, but let's just yeah. make sure we think through some of the other conversations we've had. Mm. So yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah. Now if we do that, what's going to show? Because I'll have the budget out and printed before the next meeting, because it's got to be out to the, to the county and stuff before that next meeting. So it will show a $25,000 increase in nonprofit contributions and the contingency will go down, but then we'll come back at the next council meeting, like you said, we won't release the money to the foundation until we know if there's other monies coming in from the PERS reduction. And you can see that, well, look, we've reduced PERS by 100,000. So we know that our contingency will be back up because we have this extra pot of money here. Yeah, I'm quite content with, so. with, with that amount of paper juggling. That's that's quite as okay. long as we have another discussion about sure, it, I'm, that's quite I'm okay. okay with. Right. It won't be released until you guys say to release <clears throat> it. Yeah, that's, that's fine. I wasn't in favor of the 50,000 that was taken from the contingency to start with, and I, I don't want to see any more taken. But if we can transfer it across, like John is saying, from a different area, I'd be all for that. I think it's a good program that. Uh, the foundation has and we need to support them other questions so your recommendation was to approve the resolution with the idea of the Cheetah Lake placeholder yeah can you tell included. us what our motion is? well I, I think the motion would be that you approve the budget as recommended by staff and Dean has outlined those two changes associated with the water rates and the new program at the police department and further uh, include in your motion that um, uh, $25,000 be budgeted for um, Cheetah Lake and the foundation subject to further review by the council before released so moved. Move that. Yeah, <laughs> I second. <laughs> you got all that, Linda? Okay. <laughs> Clerks always clean it up. <laughs> yeah. But now I'm confused. Are, are we we're amending the resolution and then we move to the resolution? I think you have to, if the resolution reflects 
what Dean has proposed, then I think that has to be amended as well for the 25,000. The, 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 the resolution that's in here is the, but as the resolution that was passed by the budget committee. So we need to move to approve the resolution with the three mentioned amendments that, that were mentioned. And I think that's what John just said, to approve resolution 2013-20 with the change to the enterprise fund for the $390,000 reduction, the special revenue fund for the special project, and the $25,000. Ah, oh, double dog, dare you, Trey. So. I'm going to read the title of the resolution. Please. <laughs> As amended. <laughs> resolution number 2013-20, a resolution adopting the City of Lebanon's budget and making appropriations for fiscal year 2013-14 as amended. Move for approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 2013-20 as amended. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? <clears throat> the resolution passes. And secondarily, um, now is the time to place a uh, in place to conduct a public hearing concerning the approval and denial of resolution number 2013-21, levying taxes. Any questions? Actually, I'll ask Dean for a staff report on that. This is a resolution we need to approve for to send to the county to approve our tax levy. We're asking for 100% of the taxes as the city is authorized. The 5.1364 is our permanent rate that was put in back when they were put in many years ago. You'll see there's a, all the XXs. What you'll see, we explained this last year, but we have some new council members. The Xs mean at the end of the year in July, we send to the county delinquent sewer accounts and delinquent stormwater accounts. The, the state uh, law allows us. but. Individuals have up until June 30th to pay those fees. It, it was really bizarre. Up until last year, the county didn't ask us to do this. But this, the state, I guess, hired a new clerk and they said, no, wait a minute, these resolutions are all wrong. And they made every city in the state go back and do an amended resolution in July. So this is something you're going to see every year. We're going to approve this, le this letter now saying we've approved our taxes, which we have to do before June 30th. At the July meeting, we'll come back and we'll fill in those, the XX numbers with the numbers from anybody who hasn't paid up through June 30th. So you will see this resolution again, but it's a state requirement. It, it's kind of a catch-22 in the state law that says we have to do this, an amended resolution every year because I hired a new clerk. <laughs> So, so, so that's what this is for. And as soon as we, we I, I will not send this off to the county until we do the next meeting. Then I have to rush over to the county by July fifteenth. So, to make Any sure questions? we get our taxes next year. <laughs> okay, seeing no questions, I hereby declare the public hearing open at seven seventeen p.m. Is there any members of the public that would like to address the council on the proposed resolution two thousand thirteen dash twenty one? <clears throat> Seeing none, I will declare the public hearing closed at 7.17 p.m. And we'll have the city attorney at this time read the title of the resolution. Resolution number 2013-21, a resolution levying taxes for the City of Lebanon's budget for fiscal year 2013-14. Move for approval. I'll Second. entertain a motion for a resolution for the approval of resolution number 2013. For approval. Pardon? Move for approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 2013-21. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? The resolution passes. At this point, let's take a 10-minute uh, break. Call the meeting back to order at 731. Next up, we have the adoption of the fiscal year 1314 Northwest Lebanon Urban Renewal District approved budget, Excuse making me. appropriations and levying taxes as Lebanon, Earl, Lebanon Urban Renewal District. Uh, we'll have a presentation by Dean Bunk. Excuse me. First, I think you have to come out of the city and go into the agency. Oh, right? I, I apologize. Yep. Yes. So then we, do uh, we will temporarily adjourn.
as the Lebanon City Council and reconvene as the Urban Renewal Agency Board. Okay. Now we'll talk about Northwest. <laughs> <laughs> I'll cut that. <laughs> Okay, so we have, um, sorry for the late giving you an amended resolution today. This is based on the low stuff we learned just this last week. So the resolution you're holding your public hearing on today is the same resolution that we approved at the budget committee. So it's the $16,601,622,000. That's the resolution we're holding the amendment on, or the, the budget public hearing on. <clears throat> as approved then tonight we're asking for an amendment to that the reason we're asking for the amendment is at the time we prepared the budget the city had money set aside to 2.3 million dollars to pay part of the, lo the Lowe's payment for the um, wetlands yeah. mitigation well at this time that whole payment is now being paid out of the bond which we're going to issue in July so when we wrote the budget we showed the money as being expensed this year and didn't carry it forward to next year. So all of a sudden when we were paying this out of the bond, we had $2.3 million just out there that we couldn't do anything with. Because it was out, of, we, it was in this year and it wasn't in next year's budget. The only reason I'm bringing 1.66 million forward is because we're limited to the same $5,000 or 10% change. So that still leaves $800,000 that's not gonna be spent this year and not carried forward to next year. So we will have to do a budget amendment next year. Ron guarantees me he's got a few projects which he may be able to spend a chunk of that by the end of June. We're, we're seeing how much he can spend. <laughs> right, Ron? <laughs> so he's got lots of projects going on that are, that are eligible for that money. <clears throat> so what we're looking for is to hold a public hearing on the, one million, the 16 million 601, 622, and then amend that with the additional carry forward of $1,660,000. Is that confusing enough? <laughs> mm -hmm. Pretty much, yes. And the amended resolution is in the packets? Yeah. The amended resolution been... is in here, and, and we did find there is a typo in it <clears throat> because it says it's effective with the fiscal year starting January 2012, or July 2012. That needs to be 13. <laughs> so. Any other questions? So. Okay. That, that resolution also, Dean. Oh, that, um, that's right. The, the, number the first five. paragraph needs to. Correct. The amended one also needs to read $18,301,622. So it's similar to the number you see below. It ties the detail below. Correct. Yeah. This is what you get for throwing things together at the last minute. <laughs> So, but we are holding the public hearing on the original budget, budget that was passed by the budget committee, not the amended one. That's by state law. So. So what are we doing with the amended? It, it, you have to, when you do your motion to approve, you'll approve to do the amended one. That is the staff but, but request. Your, that's our request. Okay. But the public hearing has to be held on the original as approved by the budget committee. Okay. I think I got it. Good. <laughs> we didn't try to do this to you on purpose. It was uh, something that's just evolved associated yeah. with the Lowe's uh, issues. Okay. I hereby declare the public hearing open at 7.35 p.m. Is there any member of the public that would like to address a council on the proposed um, resolution adopting the new Lebanon Urban Renewal District budget? Okay. Seeing none, I will declare the public hearing closed at 7.36 p.m. And at this point, I'll have the city attorney read the title of the resolution, the original. A resolution adopting the Northwest Lebanon Urban Renewal District budget and making appropriations for fiscal year 2013-14, resolution number 2013-22. At this time, I'll entertain a motion for resolution 2013-22. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. 
All those in favor? Now, uh, now, now it's at this point that we want we to have amended one. you consider an amendment that would add $1.6 million into $1.66 million. $1.66 million, please. And, and that is the 10% above what's been approved by the Budget Committee that will allow us to carry that money forward into next year's uh, appropriation authority. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll strike the motion. And is there entertain a motion for the amendment? So I I move for that amendment. <laughs> help me, help me. I think we're we're asking you to approve a resolution as amended to reflect the additional 1.66 million dollars into what's recommended from the budget committee. Correct. So, so moved. Second. Uh, we apologize. This didn't yeah. go as well as we'd like, but. And we just were procedurally, let me make sure I'm very clear. So what we're doing is we've introduced the res resolution. We are now moving to, to amend the resolution number 2013-22 um, in the amount of $1,666 million, and then we will have a motion to approve as amended. Correct. That okay. works. So there's a motion on the table. We're all on the same page. Better you than me, man. Do I have a second? <laughs> I already seconded it. Okay, so it's been moved and seconded to approve resolution 2013-22 as amended with the 1.66 million difference. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? The motion passed, the resolution passes. <laughs> and then we will have the levying of taxes, Dean. We have, we have the same thing as we had with the general fund. We have to forward a, a, a resolution to the state, of, state and the county saying we want to levy taxes. This year, the, the city is asking for 100% of the levy that we're authorized. As you recall, last year we reduced that to a 60% levy. So we're back to asking for 100% this year. So this resolution is 100% one, one per, of the authorized levy is what we're asking for. That's in the staff report. Okay. Any other questions of staff? Okay, I hereby declare the pub he public hearing open at 7.39 p.m. Is there any member of the public that would like to address the council on the proposed resolution? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing at 7.39 p.m. And I'll, this time I'll have the city attorney read the title of the resolution. Resolution number 2013-23, resolution levying taxes for the city of Lebanon's Northwest Urban Renewal District budget for fiscal year 2013-14. Move for approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution 2013-22. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? The motion passes, resolution passes. Okay, item number seven, adoption of fiscal year 1314 Cheetah Lake Urban Renewal District approved budget. Dean, staff report. So now it gets easier because the, the resolution we're bringing forward now is the resolution that was approved by the budget committee. There's been no changes and the staff is recommending or requesting no changes to this budget as presented. I'll also do the staff report here. Following this resolution, we have the um, levying of the taxes it's the, the same situation. We have to approve this levy each year to send to the county to authorize them to do property taxes. And the same resolution, we're, we're asking for 100% of the authorized levy for taxes this year. That is end of staff report. Just to jump ahead, was there any change in the uh, levy in the second part? No. Okay. No, the, the, we, this one we've always had 100%, and so okay. we're, again, asking for 100%. Any questions? Okay, at this point, I hereby declare the public hearing open at 7.40 p.m. Is there any members of the public that would like to address the council on either resolution 2013-24, <laughs> making appropriations, or 2013-25, levying taxes? Seeing none, I declare the public hearing closed at 7.41 p.m. At this time, I will ask the city attorney to read the title of the first resolution. Resolution number 2013-24, a resolution adopting the Cheetah Lake Urban Renewal District budget and making appropriations for fiscal year 2013-14. Move for approval. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the resolution. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? The resolution passes. 
And I hereby declare the public hearing open at 7.41 p.m. Oh, I'm sorry. Did that. <laughs> staff report. I think we did the staff report yeah. on this already. Okay, so. And I thought okay. you just okay. It's the next resolution number 25. Okay. I think you held public hearing on it already. Mm -hmm. So I declare the public hearing open at 7.41 p.m. Is there any okay. member of the public that would like to address the council on the proposed resolution? <laughs> Am I on the wrong spot? Come on, people. <laughs> Seeing none, I declare the public hearing closed at 7.42 p.m. And we'll have the city attorney read the title of the resolution. Resolution number 2013-25, a resolution levying taxes for the city of Lebanon's Cheetah Lake Urban Renewal District budget for fiscal year 2013-14. Move for approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution 2013-25. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? The resolution passes. I would like to point out there is one thing different this year than in, I think, every other year since you've done the Cheetah Lake um, URD. In every other past year, we've had to do an IGA with the general fund because with the state, yep, yep, each area has to issue debt before they can issue taxes. And so in the past years, we've done the IGA to borrow money from the general fund. In this year, we didn't have to do that because the Cheetah Lake URD has some debt now based on the Marathon apartment complex, we, we owe them back some funds. So we have the debt base with them now, which satisfies that state requirement to have debt. So there is that difference. I just want to point that out because we have always done that in every year that this area has been approved. So this was different. <clears throat> Any other questions? Okay. <clears throat> at this point, I hereby declare a public hearing open at 7.43 p.m. Is there any member of the public who would like to address the approval of resolution 2013-26 or 2013-27? This is on the gateway, right? This is, yes, correct. Well, I just wondered where we was at on that. When I was on the city council, they came in and said that uh, we had promised all the infrastructure if they came in with the hospital, or I guess there's a hospital there. Uh, and then later on, they wanted the money, they, and we didn't have the money. They said, well, we, you build it, the infrastructure, the hospital, when you build this, and then we'll pay for it. Well, then they came to the city council and said they wanted the money. Well, the city council said, we don't have the money. So their lawyer got together with our lawyer, and we're gonna pay it off later. And I was wondering where that's at now. Um, I think we should ask Finance Director Baugh to right. make comment. Yes. So, so the city has a, um, an agreement with the South Peninsula Hospital to repay them for infrastructure that's put in at the hospital site. It's a 20-year contract. And remember last year we came back and we asked for a budget amendment for $180,000. That was the first year of the payments we had to make. We came back and asked for a budget amendment, paid them 180. Now, we, so it's, it's kind of a confusing agreement. What we do is the work they're doing this year, they only have 19 years. Any work they do next year is spread over 18 years. And so it's a total of a 20 year contract. And each year they do work, it's spread over a, a different thing. So we have a payment schedule. It's in this year's budget to pay them somewhere around $100,000, which is a normal one year payment. So we do have that budgeted and the funds are there to pay them. How much is the whole thing, I'm asking? We don't know. It, it, it's at, we have a 20-year contract and it depends on what infrastructure they put in. Their engineers submit paperwork to our engineers. They, um, they look at it and say, yep, this is covered by our contract. It, it's for anything they do that is reimbursable on a, for like public infrastructure. I so if, if they put water pipes in, we will replace them for that. If they put a street in, we'll replace that. It's for just for public infrastructure. I don't believe there's a limit in there on what they can spend. I, I, I'd have to go back and read it again. But, but, you, but they submit a bill each year saying, oh, here's what we did this year. Once it's approved, we spread it over the remaining part of the contract. We add it to what we paid them last year, and we, we pay it over the next 17, No, 16, they had already years. put it in. They've put some in, but they're putting more in right now. This work they're doing out there right now, some of that work will be reimbursable to them. 
we couldn't even, I have to, you've really got me confused because they couldn't even afford to pay the first little bit? I don't understand. Dean, let me, let me jump in. So we, we had three years before the first bill was due. Did not. Yeah. First of all, it's Samaritan Health Services. Dean's from Alaska, and so he likes to call it South again? Peninsula uh, Hospital, but it's Samaritan Health Services. The, the agreement has the hospital fronting the money for public infrastructure. Right. And what we are doing through this agreement is paying back the hospital for their fronting the money for the public infrastructure. Right. That was done because there wasn't enough taxable value in the urban renewal district to provide the cash flow for us to carry the debt. So basically, the hospital is um, providing the fronting capital to make the public infrastructure. We use the tax increment to pay them back on a multi-million dollar contract over 20 years. Mm -hmm. We have no idea what we'll end up owing them. You know, the number that jumps out to me, and I can share this with you if, it, if, if you like, but one of the estimates that I saw in that Sanium, or Sanium, geez, Dean, now you've done it to me. <laughs> <laughs> the Samaritan Health Services agreement, there are some, some uh, estimates, and one of them was $5.1 million over time is what I recall. But again, it's, it's pledged by the tax increment and not by the general fund. In other words, we will have another $5.1 million out there to pay off. Over time, over oh. the next 20 years, yeah. that is a debt obligation that was agreed to by the city um, three years, whenever it was agreed on. I think four years ago. Four years ago. Seemed, doesn't seem like it was that long ago. Yeah. Right. And the reason the payment was so big last year is because there was no payments for the first three years. Last year was the first payment that was due. Oh, and they couldn't even afford to pay that the way and, I understood. And, well, no, but, we could afford it. We had the money to pay it, but we didn't have it in the budget because we didn't know what they were going to ask for. And when they sent the bill, we kind of we had some we had some didn't budgeted, have a budget, but, we, but we didn't have enough in the budget for it, so we had to increase the budget to cover the bill they sent us. So, but we had we had the money to pay them. Okay, and, and we have the money there to pay them this next year. Thank you, Ray. Any other in the audience that would like to speak on that? Okay, seeing none, I'll close the <laughs> hearing at 7:49 p.m. And I'll have the city attorney read the title of the first resolution. Resolution number 2013-26, a resolution adopting the North Gateway Urban Renewal District budget and making appropriations for fiscal year 2013-14. I'll entertain a motion. Move for approval. Second. Moved and seconded to approve the resolution. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? The resolution passes. You've covered the other one enough? The second one? I don't think I did either one. You don't need to? No, I don't think I did either one. <laughs> I don't think we did oh, a staff Oh, I'm sorry. This. Okay. You need to go into the next one, the authorization of IJ with City of Lebanon, a uh, $12 million bond. No, no, no. I don't, I don't believe we've done. I, I, I don't think we did a staff report. Do either 26 or 27. You just, you just approved 26. We need to approve 27. Right? Uh, no, we just need to re we just need, need to, to approve the, the 2013 27 resolution. Yeah, right, the tax. You did the staff report. Yeah. Just go ahead and give okay. a brief staff report. You did jump over the staff okay. report on the North over. Gateway, so just give a brief staff report and then we can go to the levy since yeah. they've already passed the resolution on the, okay. on the taxes. So, so, so just, just to, for, for the record, the, the resolution that was approved by the council was the same resolution that was brought, was approved by the budget committee with no changes recommended by staff for 234,235. Um, resolution number 27 is the same resolution for like the other two um, URDs. We're asking for 100% of the levy as, as same, same as in the past. There's been no changes to this. This will be submitted to the, count, the county for tax collection. Okay. So now we need to have the. I'm sorry, did I miss the. Did we Number do 27. For the 27. We did. Yeah, 26. 20, 26. We okay. open the public hearing. Okay. Now I need to declare the public hearing open at 7.51 p.m. Is there any member of the public who would like to speak on the resolution number 2013 727? 
Okay, seeing none, I will have uh, declare the public hearing closed at 751 and the city attorney will read the title of the resolution. Please. Resolution number 2013-27, a resolution levying taxes for the city of Lebanon's North Gateway Urban Renewal District budget for fiscal year 2013-14. I'll entertain a motion for the resolution. Move for approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution 2013-27. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? <clears throat> the resolution passes. Public hearing authorization of IGA with City of Lebanon and $12 million bond. Staff report. Okay. So, so what we have here is in, in the process of um, completing the $12, $12 million bond we're working on, we're issuing a full faith and credit bond, which means the general fund is really issuing the debt. What this IJ, we're going to do one with the general fund. The, op, the other side of this was approved in the resolution authorizing the bond that the general fund did last time, which authorized the general fund to sign the IGA. So both sides are, are, will have authorization to sign the IGA. What this does, it, it, it gives some guarantee to the, that the general fund, that the Northwest URD will pay them back out of the tax increments. So basically, through this, the general fund's issuing the debt, but the Northwest URD is going to pay it through their tax increments. So that's what this is, this is agreeing to. So this is something that's being requested by the, the bonding folks. They want to see this in place before they'll issue the bond so they know where the money is going to come from to pay for the bond. Does that make any sense? Yep, that's, mm -hmm. that's actually. Okay. Any questions? Well, I, I think at this time, John, we wanted to talk about the Eco Northwest Agreement. Uh, just kind of mention it right now? We can. Um, and I think uh, this has to be a public hearing, though, too. So there has to be um, oh. an opportunity for, for comment, I believe, uh, before we go On too IGA, far. Yeah. But what Dean is speaking to is a, is a memorandum in your packet from Eco Northwest. And this is an exercise that we went through and we asked uh, Eco Northwest to run a scenario so that the council could be um, confident. comfortable and confident that under any of the of the appeal scenarios that are going to the tax court that the tax increment would provide for the debt service associated with the bond. So on page five of that Eco Northwest report that was added to um, uh, number 10 in your in your packet, and we're currently on nine, but as Dean oh, said, it, appl it applies to both of them. Put it in the wrong place, it, I'm sorry. Uh, um, John, well, excuse me. The, I don't know if it matters, but we're actually still in session as the Urban Rural Agency Board, and that other thing is listed under the re, uh, the regular that, session. But it, it, reply, it's, it applies it's to in that. both. Okay. Yes, okay. It's, 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 it's for both uh, 9 and 10, and we just okay. label uh, it. I'm sorry, it. I got but, it out of order, but it's, right. it's for both. So on page 5 of this Eco Northwest report, there are two scenarios on the tax increment coming from the Urban Renewal District. The base case scenario is what we have currently in place. The Board of uh, Property Tax Appeals is another scenario as it plays out. And the worst case scenario is what would happen if Lowe's prevailed in their property tax appeal. And, and what you want to look at is uh, 2014, which has a worst case scenario of $2,007,748 in available tax increment to pay for debt service. And that tells all of us we can be comfortable in, in um, providing for that additional debt because the revenue is going to be coming in to pay for it from the district. Does that make sense? It's, it's a check to make sure that we don't, you aren't passing something that is at some point be going to become an obligation of the general fund. We want the general fund pledge on the debt because it gives us better rates for the bond issue, but we also want to make darn sure there is enough tax increment to pay for the debt service. This tells us under any of the scenarios that we're covered. Right. Ten years from now, we're not actually, depending on the general fund, for, for the debt service. Yeah. The or it, contingency fund. <laughs> and, and this was, when we first started talking about this bond, we were looking at a 10-year bond. This is under the assumption that we've extended the bond to a 15-year bond. So, so, so it's, it is going to be changed to a 15-year bond. And under that, then we can cover it under any scenario. So. Any other yeah. questions?
Okay, at this point, I hereby declare the public hearing open at 7.56 p.m. Is there any member of the public that would like to address the council on the proposed resolution? Seeing none, I'll close the hearing at 7.56 p.m. and the city attorney will read the title of the resolution. At this point, we get into the ones that are, I guess, drafted by council or by you. This was an attorney who wrote this one. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Our bond council likes to draft these. Yep. Resolution number 2013-28, resolution of the City of Lebanon's Urban Renewal Agency, Lynn County, Oregon, authorizing an intergovernmental agreement with the City of Lebanon, Lynn County, Oregon, regarding the transfer of tax increment revenues and proceeds to the city for the purpose of paying obligation financing of the city. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 2013-28. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? The resolution passes. Okay, we'll adjourn the Urban Renewal Agency Board and reconvene as the Lebanon City Council. Item number 10 will be presented by Dean Baugh, amending resolution 2013 through 17 for issuance of $12 million bond and authorization of IGA with Urban Renewal Agency. So, so, so what the amended resolution is, the, the only, there's, there's two changes in this resolution. One is changing its, under the um, temporary funding, we're going from a $3 million letter of credit to a $10 million letter of credit. That, that was to allow us to make the payments to Lowe's. So, so this is changing the authorization to go to a, a $10 million letter of credit. That would be, once, if we took out the $10 million, it would be repaid immediately upon the bond sell. The, the second change this is doing is in the memo that's <coughs> attached to it, and this is something that the bond council wanted. In our, in our original memo, it said we were gonna put, um, four million to Lowe's, two million to this project, one million to that project. It was all listed out. In this new memo, it says ten million to Lowe's, two million to yeah, the bond project. Still, Below that is everything to be determined. So if there is if there is other funds available, these other projects will be funded. So, but this is to just say that we're changing the the funding of the the bond to these new projects from what we had in the original time. The, the council needs to know that and to approve that. That we're changing the funding of the thing. I mean, my question is procedural. When we, uh, I know we're amended in, in restating this resolution, was this a public hearing the first time we did it? Yes, it was. So we need to have a public hearing on the amendment, it would should. be my assumption. Yes. Yes. Any other questions for Cal? of council? I believe it was. Okay, at this point, I will hereby declare the public hearing open at 7 59 p.m. Is there any member of the public who would like to address the council on the proposed resolution, amended and restated resolution? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing at 7.59 p.m. And will the attorney please read the resolution? Uh, amended and restated resolution number 2013-29. Amending resolution 2013-17, authorizing the negotiated issuance and negotiated sale of full faith and credit and refunding obligations for the purpose of financing capital improvements and refunding certain outstanding obligations of the city. Authorizing interim financing designating an authorized representative, underwriter, and special counsel. Authorizing execution and delivery of a financing agreement, an escrow, an escrow agreement, and interim financing agreement. Authorizing intergovernmental agreement with the City of Lebanon, er, Lebanon Urban Renewal Agency and related matters. Thank you. Also moved for approval. approval. <laughs> Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the amended and restated resolution 2013-29. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion passes. I'm sorry, the resolution passes. Number 11, utility billing collection survey. This Staffing. is the Dean, Dean Baugh show here. <laughs> this is Dean. Yeah. <laughs> He said he was going to take 15 minutes, but I guess he didn't add everything up. Talking too much. Yeah. <laughs> so at the last council meeting, the last council meeting, the council asked staff to come up with five, five or six questions based on, I think what we have here, uh, on the proposed um, change to the collection procedures. And I believe you also have a copy of that, that memo in front of you so you can see what the old and new collection procedures were. And, and these are the five questions we came up with. We've 
the amended, I guess we handed out an amended one today because there was a change that we put in that didn't get into the, the new ones. And what that was in questions, I believe it was three. Two and three. Two and three. In the original one said, it's been recommended that we do something. In this one, we change it to, we, it's, it's considered, we're, we're considering. We're, we're trying to write, write these so there's nothing leading about them. We want this, the public's information. So we, we tried to rewrite these so we're not leading them to an answer we want. We try to give them enough information to know what they're, the, the question's about, and then do you agree or disagree, or what, or in the case of number one, we gave them some options, one, five, or 10 days. So our whole goal was to try to ask some questions about the new proposal, not lead them to an answer and say, what do they want? And how are we going to distribute these? It's supposed to be on our Facebook page and then our website. Uh, um, let me I'll let speak Linda to do that it, a little she's bit. The, she's you might remember out. this. Um, the mayor suggested Survey Monkey, and Dean's eyes went like this because yeah. he didn't know what Survey Monkey was. So um, Debbie Shimon was kind enough to offer to help do that, and so it will be on Survey Monkey. It's not exactly in this format, um, and and we will direct them through Facebook and website to Survey Monkey. Okay. And Dean, one of the comments I had, and, and I like the questions, I, I would like to see one last question at the end where someone could actually comment. And I think you can do that on SurveyMonkey. I'm pretty sure that you can give additional comments. But I would like to just see additional comments. And we may get some that are smart aleck, but we may get some actual good feedback. Okay. Um, can, do you have a way to put a statement message on the statements directing people? I think we can put anything we want up at the top. No, no. Uh, water billing oh, statements. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, I, I've already told the clerk today that we'll, to expect the message on there directing them also to this. Okay. Excellent. So she'll put that on the next bill. Okay. I think it looks good. Mm -hmm. You guys agree with the question? <clears throat> Council? That's enough for us. Okay, sure. Go ahead and go forward with that, Dean. Okay, it looks like number 12 was canceled. Is that true? Taking off the agenda. Ron's got some feedback from one of the uh, business owners down there, and so he's got the, uh, he has the pleasure of getting some different folks together to talk about this further. Mm -hmm. This is on the Grant Street parking, West Grant Street parking. It will come back to you from the agenda. Day. Pardon? Okay. We are pulling it from the agenda. Okay, so it is being pulled. Okay, just want to verify. Okay, next up is the CH2M Hill OMI contract amendment uh, presented by Ron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, City Council. Uh, what you have before you tonight is our standard yearly uh, contract amendment update with uh, CH2M Hill OMI. Um, they operate both our water and wastewater plants. Uh, we're recommending that you approve the contract for this year. Um, you can see that there's about a 3% increase to their contract um, overall. Uh, most of that's attributed to power costs with the new clarifier coming online and some of the other additional equipment that we have out there at the wastewater plant and power costs are rising and then you also see there's some increases to chemicals and also their labor costs, their inf inflationary labor costs. Uh, this is a yearly update we do. Um, it's basically just an amendment to the original contract. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions about it. And our contract is year to year with them? It's a, I believe it's a 20 year contract with a 10 year in renewal. And this is just an amendment. Basically, we amend it every year. Okay. <coughs> the, the, the current contract dates are what, approximately? Uh, I'd have to go back and look at that. I believe we're in about a fifth or sixth year of the 10 year period. So it's a 20 year contract. But, um, so it's originally negotiated. dated July 1st, yes. 2007. Yes. So we're, we're about the sixth year okay. of that piece of it so we got another basically four years yeah 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 any other questions from staff thank you Ron. okay move that we approve the amendment to the ch2m hill contract second it it's been moved and seconded to approve the CH2M Hill OMI contract. 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion passes. Okay, number 14, uh, approval to Ward Hobbs Street, uh, presented by Ron again. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. Um, what you have before you tonight, and I apologize for not getting this one into the council memo, but we opened bids a little bit later than what we expected, and so we wanted to have some time to uh, review those bids before we uh, put it into your council packet. So what you have, the memo that I handed out, um, we had six bidders on the project, the Hobbs Street uh, drainage improvement and Arlene Avenue neighborhood improvements project um, Delta construction of Eugene Oregon got the contract they're the same contractor that's uh, doing the work on the VA hospital uh, up, up north here um, staff got six bids actually we got five bids it looks like and uh, the lowest bid was submitted by Delta for 641,000 uh, which is a pretty good bid price um, we're recommending that council award the project to them and I can answer any questions regarding that. Have we done business with Delta before? Yeah, Councilor Elliott, I have not, but I know they're a reputable company. Um, they obviously are doing a pretty good job up here. If they can work for the federal government, uh, they could probably be okay for us, I think, too. I've known some pretty big losers to work for the federal government. <laughs> well, there is that piece of it, too, yes. <laughs> But all the hoops that you have to jump through to work for the federal government, I would guess that they do fine for us, yes. And keep in mind, Hobbs Street is not, you know, what, what we're going to end up with there at the end of the day is, is two gutters down the side. Uh, we're not putting sidewalks, curbs in. Uh, it's going to be pretty much a county standard street when we're done. Um, we all looked at it when we're going to put the storm drain in. and determined that we're going to end up having to put new sanitary sewer in because the storm drain hits all the sewer laterals. So uh, in essence, the project escalated uh, and kept growing. And so we ended up having to resurface, um, but don't have enough money to do a full-blown city standard street. So, But they will get new resurfacing on it. Well, I can answer any questions anybody has. Any other questions? I move to approve the Hobbs Street Arlene Avenue neighborhood improvement project to Delta Construction. Second. Abby, Eugene. It's been moved and seconded to approve the Hobbs Street uh, contract. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Okay. The uh, communications plan, we had a Kind of an ad hoc committee, uh, Councillor Bowen, Grizzle, City Attorney Kennedy, Audrey Gomez, Alex Paul, Emily Metzer, uh, Linda Kayser, John Nelson, and Citizen Marion Davenport all attended that. And uh, we discussed a rough outline, and then I prepared uh, a little more detail. Uh, the city Manager John Nelson got really good feedback from staff, filled in a lot of the blanks, and uh, I think we have a really good communications plan here. And this is a, the groundwork for us going forward with how we communicate internally with the with staff, uh, with the public, with the press, and uh, I, I like it a lot. I think there's things that we can improve on over time, or things that we can add. One of the things that we're not doing right now uh, on the list, and I like the list because it gives us things we're doing or we're not in place or not. Um, I'd really like to see an employee newsletter. Um, for the employees. I, I know that's a lot of time and effort, and I know that the staff right now is pretty pretty packed with projects, um, but it is something I would like to have as a goal, and I, and I think we can talk more about that. But I think this is something good. Um, I, I'd like to answer any questions or bring up any issues that anybody has if, if there are any. I'd just like to thank you for putting the effort and getting this going. I think it's a, a great step towards the transparency that people want and uh, the, the open communication that, that the citizens want. So good job on it. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, I'd just like to ask if, this, if there are any staff here that would like to comment on this particular item. Since you've had some input and this will have sure. an effect on staff. Yeah. Is there any staff that, that went through this that might want to comment? Just an invitation, not a requirement to comment. Sure. Well, let me just say a few words on, on behalf of uh, staff and certainly um, Carol or Walter Ron can jump in if they have other thoughts. Dean, um, 
Greg and Linda, but um, it's a good game plan. It, it lists out the different tools that are available, and it will come down to, I think at some point, staffing and budget resources necessary to expand what we're doing right now, but it certainly is a good, uh, good game plan on how to move forward. And the thing I was pleased with as we went through this, we, we have a lot of things in place, yeah. as you said, so yeah. it's really just some of the little things that we'll need a little bit of resources to, to put towards. Um, I've been getting a lot of good comments on the YouTube uh, videos. We've had probably an average of about 50 or 60 views on each, each one. And going back, like the very first meeting, there's about 100 views on that one. So. Uh, total time was in the thousands of minutes that people have watched so it was since we started uh, in February so that's been positive positive. and our Facebook pages we get a lot of people on the Facebook page the uh, we now have a Facebook page for the city the police department the uh, library and also the senior center just um, put theirs up the other day so there's some really good communications out there uh, a lot of good information about the activities that are going on library does a lot of little fun stuff and it's, it's just it's really I think it's helping um, just kind of spread the word that you know this is the city and, and we're doing stuff for you any other questions or comments on this mr. mayor is this on our Facebook page or will it go it has not been yet. Somewhere. It's not, no. But okay. it, it would, if we pass it, it will. Great. Yes. Yeah. I, I, would, I would propose that we would uh, pass this as a plan and, and as something that the new city manager will take and, and look at and, and go forward with. Well, I'd move that we approve the communications plan as presented. Second. I, I know that it asks for an effective date. I just look at action required. I would how, soon, how soon would you recommend, oh. Mayor, that it become effective? What does staff feel yeah. like? Does it need time? You know, it's all, it's all subject to resources and staff time, so it could go whenever you'd like. We could probably just do it July 1st. Because at this point, we're, we're doing most of these things, and there's some things that we're not doing at this point, and it will just be when we have resources. You want to amend your motion? No, then I'll amend to include a effective date of July 1. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded um, to approve the city communications plan with the effective date of July 1st. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? The motion passes. And number 16, city manager report. And before you take that, I don't know I'm going to embarrass you. It is probably one of the best, most concise reports I've seen. I don't know if you've read it or not on this, this uh, report that he wrote. Um, I'm very pleased because there's a lot of little things that are in that report that I didn't know were going on. And what's neat is when people from the community ask me, well, what's happening with this thing? I saw the city trucks out there or whatever. Even though they're little things, I don't want to micromanage all those things as mayor. But just to know that they're going on and what the staff is doing is fantastic. So the staff reporting, you guys have done a great job. Thank you. And then that transferred over to his report. But to see it all in one report like this, have it at our meeting, it was really nice. And I appreciate that, John. Thank mayor you. Mayor Aziz, those are nice comments. I appreciate it. I did it all myself. I didn't have any, any help <laughs> from, from staff. Um, actually, what you're seeing is a request to the department directors to really highlight in a half page to three quarter of a page uh, what's happened the last month in their departments. And so this is just lifted directly from what Linda and the other department uh, managers provide. And then we pull it together. We share it with you. I'm happy to track down and answer questions after this meeting if something jumps out to you and you want more information. It's something also that long term can be uh, shared with the public uh, via our website. I think it's already on the website and it's a, a good product to actually push out to certain partners as well just to make sure everybody knows that there's a, a lot going on with the City of Lebanon. And other staff. I would think staff would yeah. like, to, like to know what's going on in other departments. That's a good idea. We should probably send it out to, internally to, to just a general all city employee mailing to um, make sure everybody knows. It's a good idea. It's awesome. 
So we'll continue to do this until you get the new person. Then he's going to change. He or she's going to change everything that uh, uh, we've been through. I hope not. Um, also in the packet under the manager's report is a response from Lowe's. At our last meeting, we talked about the request of Lowe's to, in lieu of their appeal on their assessed value and the $10 million bill that uh, was presented to us, we asked them to consider uh, three different items to amend the due date of the payment to September 1st rather than July 1st, which would give us time to reorganize the bond, which if you recall, what you've done through that reorganization of the bond with Dean's uh, work is save one I, I estimated at one and a quarter million dollars in interest payments that rather than going to Lowe's is now going to be available for projects within the urban renewal district. So it's a significant action that you've taken and, and um, um, uh, they, Lowe's did appreciate that extension, uh, approve that extension. Uh, we also asked them to consider uh, reducing the payment owed uh, because of the reduced assessed value that they're appealing as well as um, withdrawing the tax valuation appeal that they have going to the Oregon Tax Court. You see from their letter dated June 6 that they um, did agree to the first request, which was the extension from July to September 1st, which helps. It'll help save us uh, money that we would have to organize for interim financing purposes. And I do have a, a letter that's gone back to Lowe's just confirming and thanking them for this, for this action. So that is an update on Lowe's. Um, the, the highlights in the manager's report were, again, the budget work that's been completed and that you've gotten through tonight, as well as the Lowe's uh, project and debt service payment. And then finally, just a reminder, going back to when um, you first employed me to work uh, um, on an interim basis, uh, I had commitments, family commitments already in place for the last two weeks of June. So I will be gone the last two weeks of June and then um, back on July 2nd. Okay. And that's all, unless there were questions. Any questions? You don't have to give us details in your next staff report on those two weeks. The next, okay, well, I was going <laughs> to talk mostly about the beavers uh, at that next. Uh, I was pretty there. sure we agreed to cancel your plan. <laughs> That's what I recall. Dang, I didn't get that memo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, items from council. Anything? Thank you, staff, for good staff reports and good information tonight. Yeah, very much. Anything else? Lastly, uh, opportunity for citizens to comment on any items of city business. I just have a question regarding the uh, length of the bond. In your uh, name, please. Well, I'm sorry. I'm Mike. My name is Michael Maynard. Um, I'm uh, the vice president of the 11 Professional Firefighters. So, I'm just the the bond was set to pay off. Previously, before this lows at roughly 2015, 17. Now, is that going to be extended with this new bond, or the the new payment, the 10 million dollars? Is that going to extend things out? I I'm, I don't quite understand all that. That's why I'm asking the question. So, the URD. Yeah, the URD. I'm sorry. Yeah, um, the bond that was previously approved that was recently changed to pay off Lowe's debt as well as $2 million for the reservoir, that original bond was a 10-year bond. Okay. Um, to make the debt service fit within available tax revenue under the worst case scenario, that bond has now been extended to a 15-year term. Okay. The, I recall reading in going back over the history that there was some very optimistic numbers presented on the growth of assessed value within the urban renewal district and i think that's yeah. where that 2017 yeah, yeah. number sure. came from okay. but that has been so overtaken by events associated with what the assessed value is doing sure and that's i'm just trying to clarify that and understand good, that good so. question okay thank you that's all i have thank you any other questions from the audience <clears throat> Seeing no comments, meeting is adjourned.